So here we are in the bathroom. Uh, this one, this particular one is matching the kitchen. Doesn't always work that way, especially the landlord. Sometimes they wreck the kitchen or they wreck the bathroom. Uh, for them to match, the only time we would, I would say that you need to have them match is if they are in touching each other. If they're not, it really doesn't matter. You can make them uh, whichever design you want on each one. So in the bathroom, what's great about it is because the water getting on the vinyl, it has no cracks, no seams, nothing on that. Also something else that you would want to do is along the tub and even along the wall base, seal that off with some silicone and that will help prevent any water ever going underneath of it. Especially uh, since kids and people sometimes just don't know how to take baths. And so it helps seal up the floor so that way water, if it does get on the vinyl and they don't clean it up, it will evaporate and not have any issues. And so more than likely almost all products I would use or this would be the best one to use in a bathroom would be vinyl flooring would be the best thing to use. In another unit, uh, this one is uh, again the same landlord where he was nice enough to let us come into this one. Uh, we did this, what we did was we did some engineered hardwood floor on this floor. It was some closeouts that we had. As you can see, we didn't quite have enough, so we got kind of creative with stripes and adding it on to the end of the hallway to make it look like it was intentional. But it was one that uh, they got it super by. The, the engineer floor was running, I think, like two dollars, three dollars a square foot. So it was a, a super buy compared to if it was all the same in special order, it would have been easily something like six, seven dollars a square foot. So they, they said, hey, let's do it, let's make it work. Uh, the advantage of engineer floor is usually it's a little bit more quieter, it's not as tappy, uh, it's, a, it's a softer floor. Um, it, this one has been through about three tenants. Um, so that's been about four years. So as you can see, we kind of got a high turnover in here uh, on this one, uh, according to the landlord. But uh, some of the neat things that we've had is like we had them where they did a little bit of a damage. And as you can barely see it, it looks like the tenant hit it. Uh, they put some filler in there and put some marker. And so that's the beauty of the floor is that on a wood floor you can patch it. Also, another pro tip would be is like this is a darker floor. And also if you can get something with some character in it, as you can see, it hides a lot more too. It won't show as much as the scratches and then it's a, it's a lighter color. That's kind of why we see the lighter color over against the wall because it's less likely to have damage or scraping and things happening in it versus uh, over the area where they would put the couch and things like that. Alright guys, here's uh, some different points. Uh, I don't have one of them to show you which is the laminate flooring, but here's like an engineer floor. Uh, the engineer floor, uh, unless you have a high-end rental, or uh, that's about the only place I would use it normally. Otherwise, if you can find it on a closeout, it works really great on all grades of, of rental. Uh, what you're wanting to do is, uh, on the unit too, it has to have some humidity in it. Uh, it can't be super dry, otherwise you can have some issues. Uh, but otherwise, if you can get it uh, like under four dollars a square foot you know where some of these closeouts can go really low and there's just odds and ends and if you find an engineer floor even under three dollars a square foot it's not a bad idea to go with something like that the only downfall of engineered is that if it does get wet or if they spill a lot of water on it or don't clean it clean it quite properly it can have some effects to the product because it is wood it is natural uh, but the biggest advantage is it's much easier to uh, kind of fill in stain it high you know high things on on the product so it works out really well on that so the other one we have is a waterproof product uh, it looks like for wood this is what you see in a lot of the places now uh, the difference on this one is going to be the wear layer so the wear layers go anywhere from as little as six all the way up to about 30 mil uh, the ideal situation in a, in a rental i would stay with at least like 12 into 20 is where i would try to uh, keep on this level the advantage that you have with this is that it resists against a lot of things, especially water-based things, where you don't have to worry about if the dog pees on it or the wear and tear. It hides a lot of that. If you do scratch it, you put a little stain on it. We got a video that would be glad, you know, that you can always look up and see on that on how to repair your LVPs or your LVTs. There's several different names for this, but uh, it's a quiet floor. It's uh, probably just about as quiet as what your engineer floors. Uh, the advantage you have with this is you can run it through the kitchens and you can run it through the bathrooms. And so th that's a cool thing about these type of products is they're throughout the whole thing of being a waterproof flooring. So what we'll do is we'll kind of show you the transition. 
of how we go from the uh, engineer or the uh, any of the other hard surfaces to a carpeted product. So on this uh, room what we did was we put a carpet in here so we transitioned from the hard surfaces to the carpet. Uh, carpet, especially on this uh, unit, it's a second story unit so this keeps it a little bit more quiet underneath. On this particular unit too it does sit over the laundry room so we're not as worried about the noise. But a lot of times, again, on uh, second floors, you usually want to do carpet. We do get some closeouts, and so you can get some patterns and sometimes high air in pieces. Uh, we don't have sometimes uh, enough to do the whole unit, but we have a lot of remnants that you can pick up that gives you something different, kind of unique. But usually most people enjoy carpet because it's a little bit more warmer feel on the toes, especially during the winter time. And again, like I said, it makes it a little bit quieter, which helps out quite a bit. Like I was talking about earlier, the disadvantage of a vinyl is this right here. When tenants pull out the refrigerator and they push it back in, uh, a lot of times you'll get scratches like this uh, or even rips, small rips. As you can see, they try to put it back. Uh, sometimes you can put the filler in there or a sealer and that will help prevent it so that way it doesn't show as bad. In this case, we're, we'll probably end up renting it again. It doesn't look super bad, but it's not super great. Uh, but if we had a scrap piece of vinyl, what we could do is cut out some of these squares, probably like two at a time, and replace this, this section and replace that to get it along the next, uh, to limp it along for at least one or maybe two more tenants until uh, they damage it again and have to replace it. Now if we were to put like a LVP or uh, a much harder product in here, even sometimes we've done commercial carpet, it would help prevent this but again, a little bit more expense. So it sort of depends on the budget and the time frame that you have and also, again, the turnovers on the tenants. If you're having high turnovers, then uh, if you can spend a little bit more money on a better product like an LVP or one of the waterproof products or even uh, a commercial vinyl, then that will help. Uh, if it's a, a higher end unit, again, you can probably get away with vinyl because it will last a long time. 